thank you again so much for doing this. Our podcast is about your journey in music and how you guys got to where you are now. Um, oh, so yeah, let's just uh, start. Did you all grow up in Los Angeles or just a uh, couple? Yeah, of years? yeah, yeah. We went to uh, high school together. Oh, really? All of you, born and raised in LA. Cool. Well, um, let's start. Ben, how did you get into music? Uh, I played in bands in high school and uh, just wrote songs when I was, you know, starting when I was 13. And, oh, wow. Uh, and just, yeah, there was never really another option for me. I have no it was other. Just all, always music. Huh? I have no other skills. <laughs> so. What was it, drums? You said a first instrument you learned? For me, no. I, I play piano. Uh, oh, piano. Key. Yeah. Um, right. This is a drummer primarily over here and a uh, guitarist, but everybody's kind of tried tried a little bit of everything. Sure, sure. <laughs> Were you guys always in a band together? Or was this, I mean, like in high school, did you have like so, other bands or no? Uh, no so... The two of us. The two were, Ryan. This is Ryan McMahon, and I'm Ryan Raven, and we were in uh, great. Uh, ben is one grade below us, so Ryan and I were in uh, bands, a band together initially. Ben was in his own bands in his grade, and we did grades didn't mix, you know. Oh sure. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then um, everybody went to college for a few years, and then when we uh, all moved back to LA um, after that, uh, Ryan and I started living together um and ben and my uh girlfriend at the time now wife uh were really close friends she also went to our high school and she was in bed oh. so he hit me up one day when ryan and i were working she's like hey remember ben Berger from high school he's he's d doing songwriting and you so are you guys and producing like can he come and hang with you guys for a day and 15 years later. <laughs> <It's not laughs> Still left. hanging with you guys. <laughs> well, how did you get into music then, Ryan, originally? Um, I, yeah, I just say it's kind of, kind of same thing. I, I always was kind of playing in band, learned, like took piano lessons as a kid and then started playing drums um, a little later and just started playing in bands throughout um, middle school and high school. And then, uh, and you always had like the hand-me-down equipment from his dad, like the studio stuff. So my dad, like, oh, so my your dad was a player. Where he could always yeah. record shit was at his house. Right, yeah. right. That's, <laughs> that's how the production started because basically I would have all this like old gear and basically learn how to record our bands on it. Wow. And when it was very bad initially, <laughs> <laughs> but over time, yeah, I got more into that, and then that turned into. Uh, eventually writing and producing for for other artists and and pop music and country. yeah i mean you yeah. guys are four years wow. it was four years of not getting anything going <laughs> <laughs> like just being like damn we're really bad at this and like <laughs> just trying so hard to just like get something or, that was yeah or like thinking we were really good, good and then hearing something that was actually getting cut and being like oh we're not good at all okay. and then also like <laughs> simultaneous realization like Oh no, were our high school bands also bad? Were our friends just coming to the shows because they were our friends? <laughs> um, and yeah, and then and then it just be, kind of became like a obsession, and and eventually, um, very lucky to be, uh, you know, doing it as our as our career. Sure. Um, if you don't mind me asking, so is your dad like he was in a band or something, or yeah, like, so were he, you kind of surrounded by music all the time? Yeah, my my family had had music like my had music in it for a while like my my grandparents on my dad's side were both musicians and then um my father uh is a guitar player and and uh and was in a band and then he uh moved into film scoring so yeah there was always oh, cool uh, always, was always music around the house yeah exactly that's amazing what about you ryan ryan uh, other ryan <laughs> i mean yeah well we were in this band in high school and uh yeah, my parents aren't really musical people but they uh my dad just grew up loving Bruce Springsteen. So that was like my only thing that I ever listened to growing up. <laughs> Not a bad thing. Uh, but I think all three of us got into like emo and pop punk music. Oh, we sure. School, and that was like all that mattered. Like, Oh yeah, dude, that was my life too. <laughs> I did see that you guys do like emo night and stuff. That's rad. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. That's so cool. Okay. So like over 30 months in a row at one point. <laughs> really? Oh my yeah. God. So our, our friends put, put on the, that it's a club night for anyone that's watching that doesn't know. It's a club night uh, uh, called Emo Night where they just play 
like pop punk and emo music rad music put it, yeah just the best music ever <laughs> right <laughs> and our buddies put it on and we for the first time we we dj'd it they asked us to dj and we just for as like a labor of love we instead of just like making a you know spotify playlist of sure the emo songs we basically did all these like mashups with like edm and dance music oh and dope so we did that and then our friends who put it on were like oh you guys need to close out this night every every time and we were like oh very yeah very funny and then 30 months later it had been every single month oh <laughs> my. what was the started. first one you guys did what was the first mashup uh well we ended up doing like a bunch of them the you know as like a 30 like, minute set yeah the first one that like i think was the dashboard mixed with uh brand new or something no mixed with the, <laughs> the, the dj snake. oh dj, DJ snake, snake. Right, yeah right, right. oh sick and, uh, that's was, are those sets up anywhere i'd love to hear that yeah. that's cool oh, yeah. Cloud. yeah we turned it into th three 30 minute mixtapes of all that's mode. sick so, oh yeah. man, I'm gonna check. I mean, I love your guys' original stuff, but I'd love to hear the the mashups because I feel like most proud of this. Yeah, I think of anything we've ever done. <laughs> no matter what accomplishments we've ever been paid for, the most proud of is of the stuff that's taken the most time and has paid us the least. And that is <laughs> three I love that. That's so funny. Okay, so you guys went to high school. Ryan's, you guys are in a band, and then yeah. um, Ben, you guys all kind of collab. That was after college. You guys all yeah, kind of yeah. hang hung we were together. All like yeah, like 21, 22, basically. And then were you writing songs or like, how did, how did the, you know, well, how did you guys started, fart? Starting like start. kind of as a joke, like Ryan and I were like, let's try writing a Miley Cyrus song. Like, <laughs> okay. this will be hilarious. Like, let's try to make something so uh -huh. easy to do that. So easy to write me like pop music. And we just, it was just bad. And we were like, oh man, this is so hard. <laughs> like, this is much harder than we thought. Yeah. 10 years later. That's what we're still trying still, to do. Still trying to crack <laughs> Still trying to get that one. <laughs> Well, I mean, I look at your resume and it's like, uh, walk the moon, like owes their career to you guys. I mean, like certain bands, it's like, you look at it, it's like those guys had Anna son and it didn't do anything. I mean, it was like on the radio for 10 minutes and then you come back around and kamikaze and one foot and shut up and dance. And it's like, it's just yeah. crazy. We had, a, we had a good run with those guys. Yeah. Credit, yeah. <laughs> them, They're so talented. And, and we, just, we, we just have a good relationship. We were diehard fans of Anna Sun. Like that was oh, like, I love that record. It was so the, good. Like, this song is insane. It's funny to hear that now and then go back and listen to like Shut Up and Dance. And it's just like totally yeah. sonically so different. I know. Yeah. <laughs> they still close all their shows with Anna Sun, though. Like that's the last song every time. And well, that's dope. I haven't seen him in a long time. Uh, one. It's still, it's still <laughs> I haven't seen him since Shut Up and Dance. So, uh, uh, but that's cool. Oh, well, so how did that even start? Like, so how you guys start hanging out together and then how do you get these cuts and like, how do you get in these writing rooms? And, I mean, a couple of things happened. Yeah. I mean, you know, simultaneously, we should mention that, you know, at the same time that we were starting to write, he joined uh, a couple of friends and formed the band Group Love. Oh, and, yeah. And okay. so... <laughs> I started managing that band at the time. Oh, okay. My brother, my brother and I started a, like a management company on the side to to manage them mm -hmm. um, because my brother, I knew my brother wanted to be a manager, but at the time he was too young and still in college. He was like 19 and I was 21. So we just started managing them together. And I, wow. figured, that, and I figured that he would take over once he graduated. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all kind of, the whole thing happened because of, of, of Ben and his brother like hearing we had just uh some other friends i had um one of which was in ryan the band in high school that ryan and i were in um oh okay guitar player of group love but yeah we had just made some demos for fun on kind of on the side uh and one day and uh ben heard them and was like oh these are actually great i'll play them to my brother nikki and then they just took it and ran with it and everything that happened was happened from that so oh uh, wow uh, yeah, so that, that all happened simultaneously. And so from that, I think, uh, yeah. having been like a captain cuts, uh, sort of spawn or what, what have you mm -hmm. for like on the production side or whatever, I think we, we, we did kind of like built a team around us finally of like management and, um, started getting into rooms from that. And then I was on the road and these guys, uh, I don't even know how the walk the moon thing came about, but. Well, there's, there's a really close friend of ours who runs a label called Neon Gold Records out of New York. Um, mm -hmm. It's Derek Davies. And he's kind of, I feel like, always at the center of like the web of like the, <laughs> at least the beginning of our career. For sure. Okay. Our first couple cuts were through artists that he had put out there for singles, like The Knox and Marina and the Diamonds. 
And uh, and he was the first person to post any group love music yeah, online. Or on the first blog. Captain yeah. Cuts oh, wow. remix or anything. Yeah, he's, exactly. he's like always been championing, championing our stuff from the That's... very beginning. Wow. And um, so he, he was throwing a festival on, or he threw a festival every year, like a one day festival on July 4th on Martha's Vineyard. And he would have like a bunch of these great indie pop bands at the time and indie rock bands play this festival. And one year he had walk, I mean, he's had group love play mm-hmm. twice I think and then mm-hmm. he had Walk the Moon play once and they played and then spent the rest of the weekend there and we all kind of like hung out and broke down after that and we were like we gotta like when we get back to LA let's hang out and then hung out a couple times in LA and we were like let's just get in the studio and like see what happens and then mm-hmm. started this great relationship with them. Wow wow yeah. so do you feel like um Ryan with group love like when, when like Tongue Tied for example I mean massive song for you um, when that came out, did that kind of open the door for other other people? Like, I mean, as far as like the production went, like, hey, we were we did this huge hit. Like, how did you get into like with like the BB Rexas and stuff? Right. I think it was, I mean it was a combination. I think I think tongue tongue tied laid the groundwork a little bit, but at the same mm-hmm. time, when I was on the road. These guys were were grinding in LA, or grinding and making lot making all those moves. And and I, I don't really think the walk the walk the moon sessions actually had anything to do. Uh, with with the success of Tongue Tied, I mean, it uh-huh. didn't uh, it didn't hurt, but I, that sure. was almost like you know just meeting people and and our friend Derek introducing us and all, all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I think it was it was just a perfect storm of two great things happening at the same time, and mm-hmm. uh, and it all comes back and is attributed to to Captain Cuts as the group, and then yeah, the pops that we 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 kind of told our management at some point, you know, that as much as we love doing all these alternative. Uh, pop bands like we want to move into pop a little bit and then can't remember how the BB Rexa session came about I think the BB thing came from we had so Captain Cuts technically had sort of like from an from kind of the industry perspective had sort of developed group love and small this band small pools which oh yeah I love that band that's yeah, great. They're amazing. Too. <laughs> Did their whole first album with them. And really? Wow. They're awesome. And we, so those are two bands that Warner Brothers actually tried to sign and failed. So we oh. basically came to us and we're like, do you guys want your own label through Warner Brothers? So like next time you have something like this, like a project like this that you want to sign, you can sign through your own label at Warner Brothers. Oh, and wow. So that's how we got in the door kind of with Warner Brothers. And we had sort of like a, songs deal there and so mm. we've gotten to know some people there and they and bb was their kind of like pop superstar that they were sure. trying, trying to kind of break at the time who had had so many hits but as not writer, not as yeah a, not as, as a writer or not a feature yeah. artist or something not as not as her own artist sure we just ended up at a at a writing camp for her um with her that's cool in la and it and we got that the second day i think yeah um, oh my gosh wow second day yeah um with when you guys started or so at that point like with captain cuts is that was that just writing for other people or were you guys writing your own music and trying to release that as well yeah, the artist thing is a whole other as a whole other story but <laughs> okay <laughs> we, there was not really a plan to be an artist thing until it was kind of just offered to us out of the blue so we okay. uh, we we've always been we were always producers and writers first and mm-hmm. um and it's only been the last like four or five years now that we've been like trying to do the artist thing and also and having a lot of fun with it. Um, and how did that like? What was the what made you guys go? You know, what? like we're writing for all these other people and we're writing these hits. Just, tell us, to, tell let's us just our, do this ourselves. As quick as possible, we went into Epic Records for um, a normal meeting, just producer songwriter meeting, like to play songs. Mm-hmm. And had had that meeting, it was fine. And and then. Uh, we we're about to leave, and Ellie Reed is walking by the the door, and the president of the, the president, company. yeah, president of Epic. Time. <laughs> and uh, he knew who we were because we had just worked with J Lo, which that's the craziest sentence to even say out loud. But <laughs> we just uh, worked with J Lo. <laughs> he had heard the song and liked it, and so he was like, "Oh, Captain Cuts!" Like the meeting was over, but he like stepped in and he was like play me some songs. And we were like, okay. So we played him, I think like the second song we played him was just like a song we written with our buddy, Nate Seifert. Um, and he like, he like lost his mind in a way that like, I, I don't- it's Out I don't, of a movie I, Yeah, something. I don't think I've ever seen anybody like who's actually a real person lose their mind over a song. And like, he then proceeded to make us play it like 
five or 10 times in a row while bringing in more and more people from the office. It was like, we were sitting there like, what? <laughs> yeah, he right was now? like singing the lyrics to us. Yeah. By, like, what the... song was it? If you don't mind me asking. It's a song called Love Like We Used To. It was the first song we put out. And, okay. Um, and uh, he, so I, we, and we were just, you know, so he just was sitting there and, um, and he and uh, this guy, Chris Anacute, who was an A&R there at the time, they were both just like, uh, we were like, who do you want to put, who do you want this for? And they were like, I don't know. We don't have anybody for it. What are you guys? You guys are the artists. You're the artists. We're going to sign you. We're going to give a record deal it's oh. happening. You're going to put out your own music. It's done. And we were like, just laughing. This was within like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Oh right? my gosh. Laughing about it, whatever. <laughs> and and uh, so we just like leave this meeting and my lawyer literally called me five minutes later and she was like, what just happened? I'm like <laughs> I have a record deal from Epic records right now. What's going on? Oh my gosh. So, so you guys, yeah, we kind of just kind of we went to like lunch afterwards and we were like, all right, are we going to do this? And we're going to do this. Like, let's talk about how what we want and what, you know, and then we kind of we've been kind of finding our way over the last couple of years about what our artist project would be. And now it's become more of, you know, dance and dance pop mm -hmm. uh, where it started. And that's kind of the lane we like to fit in. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's just been a it was a wild it was a wild ride there. Sure. <laughs> wow. So when you when you presented that song and like you went nuts and then you get this record deal. Was that kind of like, were you kind of like, I don't know, maybe like worried, like into, not, I don't know the word, like scared, I guess, <sighs> to produce something again that's that he's going to go crazy about? Like, because now you're, he wants you to be an artist for his label and now you got to put together a record or something was that. Yeah, I think also because we're so used to doing so many different songs and different genres that that song specifically was not a song that we were like, this is definitely us as artists. Oh, but okay. He thought yeah. would be. So we were kind of like, is this what we have to do? Like, is this our lane? Or, and mm -hmm. we just started figuring out that the lane was just kind of like songs we loved that maybe like weren't really going to work for anybody else, but we loved right. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it's slow, but slowly we've been able to like craft the, the, the style a little bit more towards just like one yeah. sonic thing. And I think credit mm -hmm. to, to the, the emo night scene as well for, for kind of making us realize that, that we also were, like as artists, like part of the DJ lane. And I think right. working, working the dance music from that angle into it. And then, um, I mean, we've only done one live show and it was basically like a hybrid DJ hy live thing. Um, oh, cool. Where show. did you guys first, play that? Or where did you guys show was, was opening for the chain smokers in front of 20,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> the real chill, oh the real chill situation. Oh my God. Tell me about that. Still where was that? Uh, in Milwaukee at Summerfest. Oh my gosh! That's our one one and only show to date. That's not a that's not like a DJ, a DJ set. set in a club. Yeah, I mean, why you could just say the last just say hey, you know, we we open for the chain smokers. If people ask about it, you don't really need to do another yeah. one, right? <laughs> um, that's cool. Do you enjoy the live show? Or I mean, I'm sure you yeah, want so want fun. to keep. Yeah, I mean, we spent so yeah. much, we always put we always put a lot of uh, attention into those kinds of details. Especially, I mean, these guys are so attend like detail oriented, mm. and the show was just like. We had we had a thirty minute set and like every moment of it was like meticulously planned out perfectly. It was it was satisfying. It was really satisfying <laughs> to, to do live. Yeah. Um, um, for you, Ryan, as a as a you know, you played with Group Love and toured with them. Was it is it is it hard not like? Do you miss that aspect um, of it, like the touring and the live shows and all that? Yeah, I mean, play, playing in front of a crowd that's of people that's excited for you to be there is always <laughs> is always an amazing feeling um sure I, I think you know I, I there's obviously any aspect of touring there's pros and cons I mean it's it's amazing and it's it's such a um I felt so privileged to have done it and and done it at that level for so long and it gave gave me a lot of experience and um you know just kind of know how on, on when we, if we do it again at any time, like we just mm -hmm. know how to do it right. Um, sure. And, uh, but no, I, 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 I'm a homebody and I, and, and I think at the core we're real like studio heads. So mm -hmm. I think I, as much as I enjoyed that experience, I, the whole time I was missing being in the right. studio. These yeah. Guys prefer being at home <laughs> yeah so yeah, I, think, I get but, that but, you know obviously if, if more shows come about and we go back on tour i'm sure when that if, when that happens i'll i'll be thrilled to do it again but you're right um you know the grass is always greener so uh sure after doing it you just want to be home in the studio and when you're home in the studio you want to get back out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um so i want to ask you guys about 
how like how did COVID affect you guys directly? Like, were you releasing music and then you had to kind of put it on hold? Were you working on something in the studio that got shifted, or did it really not kind of affect you other like? than the normal I, I mean, can go outside. It, it changed the way everybody was making music. So that, uh-huh. was, you know, I would say like the first, the first few months were like incredibly unproductive. Uh, really? Were you guys like working on something and then like, like a, a co-write or something and they're like, well, sorry, you can't come to the studio anymore for Yeah, I mean, nobody was going months. to any studios. It was all being done over Zoom or mm-hmm. if, if at all. Um, mm-hmm. and then, but I think in the very beginning, most people, songwriting and producers in the scene or the community were like really unhappy with Zoom sessions. Like it just- Yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> good. I think over the last few months though, it's gotten a lot, everyone's gotten a little bit more settled accustomed, in. accustomed yeah. to it. Oh, okay. And, some of the sessions have started to feel somewhat like sessions in person. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, you know, it is, it's, I, we miss in-person sessions big time. Uh, and I, like I think it. people are starting to do like the pods of people that will sort of quarantine together beforehand, all get tested and then spend yeah. like five days working together, which is actually what we're yeah. doing right now. Yeah. that's Oh, you up. are. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. We're in Palm Springs right now with like, three of our favorite writers that that actually wrote the song that comes out putting tomorrow. out yeah that comes out tomorrow oh rad okay i want to hear about the song coming out tomorrow because this won't come out tomorrow so we'll it'll be as if it's already out. It's coming out <laughs> it's already at the top of the charts right it's now. already number one how did it happen perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah so tell me about the so you guys are in old oh, go back real quick so you're in palm springs right now just kind of yeah uh quarantining and yeah we we are we are all in a in an Airbnb that we've set up a, a makeshift studio in, and you know the, don't tell the host. Yeah, <laughs> that's just, dope. Just, uh, I wonder if a lot of people are doing that because you know Coachella is not there this year, yeah, so yeah, those people are probably like, we need somebody to come rent our. There's place. a citywide noise ordinance right now where you're not even allowed to have any music outside at all, like even playing off your phone or anything. So what? Making, really uh, we're making the quietest dance music of all <laughs> oh my gosh that is crazy okay well tell me about this song is this song a song you guys wrote at in palm springs where you are right now no so we so we did this song uh with with these uh other songwriters uh jake tory and tia scola who are just incredible um we, we basically when when was it last in, year in january of this year i mean it's still mm-hmm. this year but pre-covid no, no, no. no when we did <laughs> I like, stuck in my head. It was Jan- oh, it was I January. say January. This this oh, past yeah, January yeah. of 2020, before COVID. Okay. Right because, before. Yeah, we um we did we, another camp. We did another kind of camp like this pre-COVID in Colorado, and um, uh, had about you know 10 or 11 of our favorite writers, and we would kind of split into groups and just um, try to make great dance music for the for the Captain Cuts uh, mm-hmm. artist project, and we'd bounce around and just all be working on different stuff. And it's just uh, th- these kind of, those kind of camps happen a lot um, in this kind of like small world of, of pop songwriting and production. And they're just really great. Um, they're great settings for that kind of creativity. And we just, um, yeah, this song, this is the the best, one of our favorite songs that came out of it. And, uh, and then AJ Mitchell, who's also on Epic Records, uh, we've mm-hmm. worked with on his project uh, before. And- Oh, he's amazing. He's just the most really incredible. His voice is so good. It's like. <laughs> so when he got on the song, it, it just took it to a, a whole nother level. Um, and yeah, I mean. We're very excited for yeah. it to come out. That's like awesome. whenever we, We've worked with AJ a couple of times. And whenever we work with him, we always make him do like these ad lib passes at the end, like three or four all the way through the song. And like. Uh-huh every single one of them is the coolest thing you've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, oh, like, save all these. <laughs> it's so hard to pick them because you have to be like, all right, this one here, this one here. Oh, they're all perfect. Right? Oh, they're all perfect. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like you should release like just ad-libs as like a whole album. <laughs> like, that would be awesome. You should pitch it to them. <laughs> they're insane. Is- um, I have a real quick question about uh, with the, these writing camps. I know you've probably done a lot for other artists. Is yeah. it weird doing a, or is it, how is it doing an art, like a writing camp for your yourself, so to speak? I mean, you have other artists it's helping you guys. It's the best. It yeah. is? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now we know how it feels. And, and, and there's, I mean, there's I think a different, also, the different kind of pressure. Yeah. But, but I, I also <laughs> think that we, we put a lot less pressure on people than I feel like sometimes we felt going into those camps before. It's not, mm-hmm. not, I think the way we're doing it, especially this time, it's not a competition of any kind. It's just like everybody's involved in every song and like, 
we're just kind of, you know, just trying to write great music. And so mm -hmm. it's not really even. That's true. Some of the, some of the writing camps that the, the major labels put on can be like very competitive. And I was wondering about that because not everyone there is going to get the cut. Yeah. So it's whoever writes the, you know, whoever does the best job, right? Yeah. And it's like, oh, who, who are you paired with today? Oh, cool. Oh, uh, what do they do? What does their song sound like? And the label's uh, all, like, we need a smash. We need a smash. <laughs> but it can't, I mean, it, it you know, to their It credit. obviously works. <laughs> or they wouldn't be doing them, but. Yeah. Well, but we thank you guys. Of, oh, sorry. sorry. No, go just, ahead. We do a lot of like pivoting during these sessions. Like we had probably 11 or 12 ideas that were just kind of like floating around that were completely unfinished from this week. And, and sort of by the end, like probably the last one we did was like, we were like, this is, this feels like the one or the last two we did. And so you get one song out of a camp. That's a win. We've kind of figured out that it's, that's, that tends to be the best way to do it. Cause you don't want to get bogged down with like the first song, like, and you have to then finish that one and like rewrite this. And right. I was doing a million ideas and then, eventually we all are like yeah that's the one. Oh, this is something mm -hmm. i would listen to loud, like loudly in my car yeah right. if it's really good it tends to be like agreement among everyone like yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's cool um uh so with with the song you just put out or coming out tomorrow but you just the song with the song you guys just put out is that going to be part of a are you guys putting a full album out an ep like what what are you thinking no right, i mean right now i think the way that and this is kind of a, the way that the the whole music scene is going with releases i think especially during covid i think people are just putting out singles and mm -hmm. definitely I, mean, I don't know maybe at some point we'll compile it into a like a mini album or an ep but right now i think we just want to put out uh you know a great song every six weeks or so or so sure. and yeah. uh and i think also for for a dj project um to dj dance centric project that's kind of more of the the release schedule people are used to these mm -hmm. days you know it's a, versus like a indie band or something that's what people expect a full album body right of it. And, yeah uh, it's definitely a different world with the singles i yeah. mean people yeah. are just i'm sure it's much easier to kind of test the, the temperature of people like do you you know if they like it or not instead of putting a whole record out and so yeah, yeah it can be. So in some ways there's more pressure though because you know it's it, if you put out an album and there's three great songs on it you know people will forgive uh, 11 terrible ones or whatever or <laughs> yeah and then if you put one out that they don't like i guess there's no other option right, right. <laughs> well thank you guys again so much for doing this i really appreciate it thanks for bearing with my neck brace and and all that fun <laughs> stuff but uh <laughs> yeah, i almost hung up multiple times i i would if i saw me <laughs> well thank you guys again so much so i have one more question i want to know if i can get uh if you have any advice for aspiring artists i want to see if i can get an answer from all of you Inspiring artists. Yeah, musicians, I would say, mainly. I mean, don't don't settle, you know, just just keep keep uh, keep trying to better what 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 you think is your best work uh, over and over, you know, yeah. and uh, sometimes don't even put it out until you really think that you have like the best you've ever had. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think the first look is like so important. And yeah people if you're going to be a big artist i think people are going to go back and like find your first song <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> want to make sure it's really good <laughs> yeah i, 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 you, ben. Advice, I would but... <laughs> i would say i would say don't do the thing that i do which is compare yourself to others and look and look at what everybody else is doing don't do that because it never helps me and it won't help you <laughs> i just, love it I, also have fun yeah have, actually <laughs> also remember that this is like a ridiculously fun thing and it shouldn't be too serious Bring it back for you.